testing one two three yeah <laughs> yeah right on we're about to do it okay it worked it works excellent good i'm very excited finally awesome. hell yeah so i get to tell elf on twitter that we'll be back on yeah like how wait how did this all happen again there was a bunch of fun synchronicities that you had that you're like what something i think corinne it went something like that i don't know i just thought that was fun so you want me to talk about the synchronicities that brought me here today or kind yeah i mean yeah definitely sure do it i saw a chance had interviewed Lindsay from rogueways right i got all those names right <laughs> and chance does the podcast interverse and then I think most must have been through. I don't know how I literally got a hold of you. Yeah, yeah. I saw the name, Weaving Spiders Welcome. And then I messaged Jim and I was like, dude, what's that all about? Because that sounds Masonic. And then Jim. And then we said we were maidens because, like, my name is Kor and it means maiden in the Greek. And so we were bonding on the maiden thing. And that's my last name. Maiden. <laughs> yes. And then you guys were on Rogue Ways. It's true. That was fun. That was a great show. And then afterwards, you invited me to be in a chat. And then I chatted a long time with David. <laughs> but I got to saw, see your um, goats. Those goats are so sweet. So. Uh, it's the uh, it's eleven oh. eleven, by the way, Snake. It's eleven eleven right now where I'm at. Nice. And in California, it's nine eleven all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, something that was very awesome. interesting to me that David and I found out about each other was that we're both Cherokee, but also very big deal. Everybody's like. That's like the most common, but still, go ahead. Sorry, it's good. Well, this is what I want to know about because no one's talking about it and I'm a conspiracy person. So um, my great-grandmother, full-blooded Cherokee, was named Daisy Dill. And I've always thought of that. That's two herbs, you know? And I thought, well, maybe that was her slave name. You know, like they didn't name her Trisha or something. They named her two herbs to keep her in her class. And then David tells me his great, great grandfather's oh, name. It's just my great, yeah, I'm my, yep, my mother's size. It's um, Hemp Wood. That's, yeah, Hemp Wood. His first name's Hemp, last name Wood. That was it. So it was like, in, isn't it strange we don't know our own lineage like we uh, should? Yeah, yeah we, I, we know names and whatever, but we really don't know our past like the elite do, you know, and that's yeah. our power is our past. It's a gen genetic memory, man. I, My father. I it's a gen genetic memory, man. I, My father. I which means a pigeon and or dove, and in Spanish, it's pichon. And my family crest is the uh, – here, I'll show it to you real quick. I got Mother Nature uh, – inside my uh family crest yeah let me shine a light on it real quick so you can see it and uh it's sitting above the knight's armor so that the bird is even more powerful than than the armor itself you know so that's 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 what that is and then that's that's traced back to column columbine columbia uh hey, the dove yeah, Freeman Fly did a whole se series on yes, Columbia, the goddess. Yeah, yeah I, I told Freeman I'd try to shout him out tonight. So the minute well, I heard something, <laughs> the dove, the dove goddess, right? The goddess, the dove. There's a dove on there, but I think they got it wrong. It wasn't Italy; it was Sicily. Oddly enough, and uh, it's uh, you know, even if it's not it, it's the fact that the symbology is empowering. And I have a shield. I have an armor. You know. Every every family should have that. It's it's your banner, it's your yes. legacy. And and I would suggest if you guys don't have one, to make, make one. one. Absolutely. Yes. 
And then if you want to turn it up to 11, you paint your face and go out in the woods with a rifle. <laughs> you do. Yes. There's something about painting your face, man. Any way you see fit, it's just something about uh, it's not covering up something. It's actually becoming one with something. Rip it and rip it, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's that's all the hits I'm taking tonight. <laughs> that that ancestral healing, I don't know when it came up in your guys' radar, but it seems like collectively and our little collective tribe here, because uh about 2018, 2019, for real, man. And then uh 2020, like if you guys just engage a little bit in it, you know, I encourage if anybody's in chat. Who hasn't? You know, this is the work to be done right now, for real. Yeah. And do you have some? Oh, nice. It's a a hawk or a, a falcon, perhaps. Uh, oh, you caught a duck. <laughs> a duck. It's yeah. Oh. Show What's it again. On? Show it. I'd, I'd like to see that again. I couldn't see. It. Oh, oh, it's right phone. here. When I talk, it might uh, make me pop up there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, notice, notice what it's killed. What? What? I can't well, look at the bird underneath it. I think it's a duck. Not a. Uh, oh, that that is a dove on this one. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are ancient warriors. And notice, and notice the shields yeah. above the falcon. <laughs> Coy's right over here. So for man, is, is it your maternal line or? No, ma maternal the matriarchal mom. Matriarchal is the father. Right, but what's and the matriarchal mean? is the mother. Is either one more important than the other, or? That depends on if you're a pagan or not. So in the in the pagan tradition, then go into it. Come on. Please. In the pagan tradition, you have the lord and the lady, or the god and the goddess. And that filters down into all of nature of the planet Earth. So where we could look at a more of a transhumanist viewpoint of ones and zeros, or we can look at a natural divine viewpoint of masculine and feminine. Oh, you go, girl. Thank you. No, that's good. We're not going to be counting shit. We're just going to go more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can you count shit? Seeds are abundant and countless. You can't count seeds each 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 plant. It's just nice. it's randomness and it's beauty. It's not meant to be zeros and ones. That's all. Uh, I'm listening to Wayne McCoy today, and I was going over his uh his he was reading from um Manly P. Hall's Melchizedek and Unseen Forces, which is highly recommended. Ohm so talks about Mount Melchizedek, but go ahead, yeah. Yeah, and he's really he's really pushing it about the transhumanism. He's like they're trying to quantify everything. They try and count everything. They try and break it down in numbers. And that printout, you know, of the uh, doctor's um, report. Anyway, I just received a fucking. I lost my fingertip on my left hand, and I I really do believe that has to do with that ancestral trauma. Yeah, first thing that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, we've been here for a long time. I think, I think anyone, like, I don't know, you guys got, you've been here for 200 years, your family or more, or there's something going on. I actually have some insight into that, fellas. Please. So from a scientific ones and zeros perspective, you're being influenced through the DNA in your body, correct? Through these ancestors, your DNA. That's what I feel. Yeah. Epigenetic. That's, yeah. That's what you feel. You feel that. Well, I think you think it. And I think what you feel yeah. is, <laughs> is the ghost of your ancestors in real time. Okay. <clears throat> I've gotten a big blast of like wind in my face. Like when i needed course corrections i think and it was something on the family that that the family might have an interest in i guess the ancestors can be in Bones. 
two different realms. So you can be dealing with two different type of ancestor, depending upon which realm they're in. Your ancestor can be a, what we call a hungry ghost in Buddhism in the bardo or the hell realm. And mm -hmm. they can be running, trying to run your life as if it is their life and trying to reincarnate through your seed because that is their goal. But their now goal, that, why before, in, sorry. Well, I just heard someone read out of the Bahagavita, whatever. The Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, sorry, thank you. <laughs> Didn't mean to butcher that. But Yeah, uh, keep, uh, is a snake? Yeah. I wonder, could she keep going on the uh, other aspect? Because it was getting to a uh, uh, different, different. Uh, I forget well, what reincarnation it is you you die and then you're evaporated and then you rain down and then you go into the wheat of the seed, right? And then mm. the people eat it and then you're reincarnated. That's Marishima 2012 just put a video out on it. Yeah, we're and talking again, about seeds. What you're looking at there is a DNA ones and zeros physical point of view where i speak right. from i speak from a metaphysical or shamanic point of view which is beyond the five senses awesome what's the other level you were talking about there was okay. uh yeah you've got the bardo or the hell realm with the hungry ghost ancestor trying to control those who are living in real time then you have those who have made it to what you can call the heaven realm right? So these would be the ancestors that you celebrate. The Greeks used to have, uh, the ancient Greeks used to have a little place, a little altar in their houses with depictions of the gods. And this was like their, where they went to worship as a family and to celebrate their ancestors as well. And so everybody had that. It was commonplace. But the way that ancestors are worshipped today, for the most part, are putting the living person in danger. Unless you're a highly trained Vudan, Voodoo, Voodoo kind of person, you know, that you're going through the priesthood and that really dedicating yourself, then I always caution people to stay away because most of our ancestors are alcoholics. They beat their lives. <laughs> oh, they had super, super problems. It, just because they're dead doesn't mean they're smart. So, I mean, my dad was an alcoholic and that probably went back way back. Mine so, was too. And so was my granddad. Yeah. You know, how much it's, it's, yeah, it's in every family. It's both sides. That alcohol. Like, yeah. What's your, what's your, do you want to talk a little bit about your background and like what, I don't know how you got here or whatever, just, I don't know, wherever you want to start to, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I can break it down really quick. Uh, so I was born into a Jehovah's witness family. Um, my father was an alcoholic. My mother was a codependent. She was a very sweet, hardworking woman, always worked for herself. So that helped me learn how to take care of myself. But I got into, um, paganism when I was about 15 years old. I got serious when I was 16. I started reading tarot in a nightclub when I was 17 and in around 20. Three, I opened my first The Occult Shop is what it was called. And it was an occult store. I gave readings. I had the whole community in Cincinnati, Ohio. So my moniker, Occult Priestess, actually means something. I had a coven called, and I still do, the Coven of the Illuminated Shadow. And we had over 28 people at one point. And then... Um, I had an ego death. I don't know if many people know what that is, but I met my guru when I was 23, which is before I opened a store. But I met my guru, Sri Mama Devi of the Karma Kagyu Tibetan lineage of Buddhism. And she taught me how to be a person. She taught me to get away from my ego enough to start correcting myself. And then I, I went to 12 step groups. So I healed my codependency that I had learned from my mother and maybe born with because <laughs> I love people a lot, but I've since learned how to love in a healthy way and how love is healthy. It's not a vampire situation 
which codependency often is. Um, and I had a second store called Aquarius Star. And then uh, this is many, many years of my life. But then I had a mission from God. God came to me. Oh, and this is after several Kundalini awakenings, which I haven't even spoken of and said, hey, girl, why don't you get out to L.A.? Let's see if we can take over the media. And I had a target of David Wilcock and Within a few months, I was in the room with him okay. and <laughs> I was touching his heart every moment I could. And we were just trying to be the witness for God around all of these people out here in LA and the UFO disclosure community. What well, year was that? Odd. <laughs> Sorry, what? What year was that? So I first got to LA in 2016. I've been on this mission for what, five years now. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. Yeah, because these pieces, you are awesome. it, that's what, I mean, that was like the dead giveaway we were talking about the other night for Q. The second we heard David Wilcock talking about Q, I knew it was bullshit. <laughs> Actually, was, if you notice, Wilcock talked like Q before Q even existed. Exactly. I was literally like, oh my God, this is all this. This is so stupid. And then, I, yeah, I was like, well, I'm comfortable. I'm totally comfortable not believing any of this shit because it just doesn't feel right anyway. Anything. Well, what I've learned out here with the new age community, UFO community disclosure, is that this is where things originate. This is where they get their scripts. This is like where the FBI puts their money to make well, in the sci-fi scripts like, for the new world order. Yeah, Lookout Mountain, Laurel Canyon. Do you, there's how much do you? How much? What do you need? Disney? What else do you need? Like seriously, I mean the brainwashing capital of America. Exactly. Yeah. What is it? What is it specifically that California is located that is somehow a catalyst to disperse that that across here? What is it about no that state? Well, I'll sure. tell you something. Yes, yeah, always crazy. astrology ley lines. But something that the Greek god Zeus told me is that this is up above this, up above LA, is Olympus. But Whoa. everything here is turned upside down. We're in upside down world. So we're talking Hollywood. Think of it as Olympus for a moment, but understand it is the inversion of Olympus. And these are those false gods of the false light. Okay, Corey, I just want to throw this in there. June 3rd, 2011, I landed at Skid Row, LA, broke and homeless. And ended up in a sober living doing the 12 steps. Great, Listen good for you. David Wilcock. Listening to David Wilcock versus... Oh, no. Well, you just said Zeus, right? Yes. So wait, hold up. So everybody's record scratch. You just said Zeus told you. So I've got it. I've got to do. I've got what? How? What? Zeus? How, yeah, how, please how, more. How? The Joseph Campbell version? Like, do you know who Zeus is? Do you understand? Well, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're all. We're, 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 I mean, I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Like, oh. No, not at all. I just needed to know where to start. Yeah, so. I, I want to just be like, okay, so f me just playing. No, I'm not playing. Like, oh, I don't believe what you're saying. I'm not saying that. I'm just curious to know your experience and how Zeus were to come to you. Because to hearing that for a lot of people is woo woo craziness. You understand exactly? Yeah. So I don't even need to go any further. So not for I, me. Not after this summer. No, no. I, all years. Dude, and I'm totally. That's why you got to get the experience, bro. Clever up, clever up, <laughs> not everybody watching this or hanging out with is necessarily. David, on board. David's never had an an amazing experience. David has. David has. Believe me, he has. That's a whole other topic, and that's personal, gentlemen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, anyway, that's true. Anyway, so it doesn't really. All right, so. Yeah, when, you, when you first get into Wicca, um, I was reading books. So I read uh, a lot, The Witch's God, The Witch's Goddess, two different books by the Farrars, F-A-R-R-A-R. -R -R. And they're like encyclopedias of ancient gods and goddesses that I used to worship in past lives. So when I read their stories, I remembered, it's like I felt their stories. But in Wicca, I was taught to go, when I go into prayer, when I go into circle, I was taught to listen for an answer that I would be answered back. But I've also 
I have a very extreme talent of having my third eye open since birth. So if there was something around to talk to me, I could hear it or see it or feel it. Um, So going into ritual with an open heart and being vulnerable without my ego and just saying, I believe I'm your daughter, Lord and lady, God and goddess. And in that vision in particular, when I was uh, 18, maybe 17, they the roof on my building came off for me and I could see the sky above and a god and a goddess came down and said, yes, please uh, join our path of Wicca because that's what I was doing. I was self-dedicating to the path of Wicca and that's when they first came to me. But through many years, I have worked with and loved many gods and goddesses. But for the past, or maybe even 10 years, I've been working with the Greeks and my main spirit guide, my operator is Hermes Termaximus Trismegistus. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm, I'm very familiar. I don't, I don't think I need to go on this big, too big of a thing here about her, who Hermes Trismegistus is to everybody. But in the chat, there's people that probably maybe don't know. Um, and it's, and it's it's under armor logo. <laughs> there you go. Um, he's the FTD flower guy with and he's also the Kadusha you guys. He is. There you go. It, it's he's it's, standing on a skull a snake. Um, usually he's depicted standing on the world. But here you just see his wings. He's he's Mercury. the guy that gets into the Gatorade whenever uh, Mercury's in Gatorade. It's got electrolytes. Uh, like retrograde. All the all the stars do uh, that like whoop. What was his purpose oh, in the Greek lore? What was he a messenger or what? So, if you're talking about actual mythology, reading Budge in the actual books, um, he let out. They knew he was a trickster the moment he let out someone's cattle maybe Aries or somebody's cattle. Um, but yeah, he is the messenger of the gods. He's very special to all shamans and all occultists because he's a psychopomp. Psychopomp is to walk between the worlds, this yes. dimension I'm in all. Yep. Sorry. and all the way to heaven. And some of us even beyond there because we have open cosmic consciousness because we have broken through and deleted the subconscious. Oh. That's fascinating. Oh, girl. Yes. So, yeah, this is, this is great. Um, so why don't you get a little bit more into, I guess, um, what currently you're up to in LA? I mean, like, there's so many fools out here, and you mentioned a few. Um, and we don't need to keep mentioning them because people in the chat know who we're talking about. It doesn't really matter. Blue chicken cults, all that fun stuff. Frauds, giving frauds platforms. I've always found that gross and disgusting and called that out on Twitter. I don't care. Name names. It's because it needs to happen because people are. It does need to happen. We need to champion the truth or no one else will. And you can't give in to those who are making shit up. And challenging the hucksters, the charlatans and not giving any pushback is, is, is disgusting. Well, it is. What I found also, there's some people out there that are just haters their whole channel is based on hating people and they're not even looking up facts or doing research they're just hating and that's a concern well it's a concern but i mean yeah but i guess hey i mean i can't tell you how many chances i had i had both the authentic joseph campbell neil kramer real guys out there doing it i love neil kramer Neil he's a mentor (laughs) he's my mentor he's a good dude He's gone Christian lately. I don't know who Neil Kramer is. He might be scared. <laughs> Things are happening. <laughs> yeah. And the world's going to melt. But Neil Kramer and MC5. It's what, the what did you talk about? The tests put before you. I mean, really, I'm so thankful both for the New Age, David Wilcock, Blue Chicken stuff, and the, you know, everything that was going on 2011, 2013. Well, what David did to Gaia, who was feeding him, the hand that fed him, he turned yeah. around and said that Gaia was full of Satanists 
and quit. But then he wrote an apology letter and said, can I come back, please? And then right now, of course, there's all that Corey Good stuff. And did he leave Corey Good behind? You know, it's all drama. But it, yeah, go ahead. I haven't fallen it at all. I mean, I, I, I focus on this stuff. Yeah, once he started talking about intergalactic blue people type thing, it was just, it was a little, a little silly. Get out of here. Yeah, you ain't like, like bird, blue bird people or some shit. Well, where do you draw the line? I mean, like, if draw you see someone failing the test, I mean, the test is there, right? You get right. what I'm saying? But so many, it, the only issue is so many people were on board. It was disgusting. I mean, let's be realistic, though. Like, I, I ordered the, the book, the source code, and oh, wow. uh, that, that question, like, the philosophy question, like, in one word, tell me why. So it and sounds like, like Corey, that you, uh, you met him and everything, and you might have gone down that path, but something happened, or what? So I was on a mission from God to move to Los Angeles from Ohio, which yes. I did. Yes. And um, my friend, and I call him my mentor. I don't know if he agrees with me. Is uh, Freeman Fly of FreemanTV.com. You know, Freeman. <laughs> Freeman. Like I couldn't be like. You know, so go ahead. I'm sorry. So well, Freeman but... hooked me up with a guy out here named Jimmy Church. Nice. Yep. Here we go. And his radio show is named Fade to Black. And that's where I, I went with those people. It's like I was just letting the door. They're like, oh, your friend, come on in. No problem. And uh, <laughs> then I got on the show and I started not hanging out like on the weekends at their house, but hanging out with them at the bigger social events. And I went to their New Year's Eve party at their house, pretty private. And that that's where I first met David Wilcock and asked him questions. I was so excited. And I actually, within earshot of him, I asked a friend there, I was like, well, have you ever heard of the dark journalist? Because at that time, Daniel Litzt, the dark yeah. journalist, was doing a series about the Blue Avians and about Corey Good and David Wilcock and actually brought it up in the room. And then Jimmy Church had a reaction, like, don't talk about that. And I just let it go because everybody's drinking. They're trying to have a fun time. But um, I definitely felt feathers ruffled just bringing up that name. And I figured, well, they're all in the business and wouldn't they all like each other? Apparently not if one is attacking the other. <laughs> Oh, yeah. So and that was wild going to a New Year's Eve party out of the blue out nice. here in L.A. straight from Ohio. It was it was wild people. And there was no one really to tell about it either, except for some a bit of on my YouTube audience or radio audience. But I was definitely having these experiences. I went to the fairs out here and uh, worked with Steve Murillo. Um, so he's from MUFON. Huh. Y'all know what MUFON stands for? It's some kind of UFO place. Oh. And through going to MUFON, I got to meet Jordan Sather. Oh, wow. And so there's, you know, all those people, uh, Teresa Yanaros. Um, but also I got, <clears throat> I met bigger people and got to be with them, like hanging out with them, touching them. That's what a shaman does, you know, touches and feels them, gets the nice. read on them. So like Linda Moulton Howe. She was there, you know. Hey, hey, six feet, six feet apart, right? Not yet. This was <laughs> all. Not until I took the. I have a magazine for the the conference that we all go to every year in February. Last February, I put that magazine on my altar and said, "God, do what you need to do. I'm done with this. I don't. I quit my job. I quit." going around these people and you know being a witness for you i can't stand this anymore and directly after that we went into lockdown and it was just yesterday yesterday when i cleaned my altar moved the magazine and the signatures there's a signature of the magazine of russell brand because he was there but that's not where i got it signed long story <laughs> but i'm just saying we're going to see some changes here coming soon. And I do feel it's going to come in the form of pushback because I have had that magazine on my altar for a year and who knows what kind of karma that did. Outstanding. So you this, are authentic. this is wild. Like I didn't. Okay. So 
I, I think it's awesome what you did, and that's part of the reason why I was like, oh, the story is like too too crazy. It's close in a bunch of ways that I don't need to really go into personally, as you know, because it's just silly, and it's just little gossipy dumb details, so I'm not going to do it. But um, it's just really, really random. It's, it's just so random. And ultimately, I missed some of that. Sorry, I couldn't get my monitor working properly. But anyway, um, so, so you got a chance. All right, so I ended with hearing you talking about as a shaman. Um, where were you? You touch people. You feel people. But I was playing out here in Los Angeles. I uh, had... David Wilcox, but also Russell Brand was the the bigger overarching target. Where was and he? Why? What, or was he just what was it like Duncan Trussell? Not like it sounds all stupid, TMZ gossipy and dumb, but I don't know, it's weird. It's well, right. you've got to probably understand. I've probably dealt with these very particular souls in past lives, and so I was the one that had the karma to deal with the situation. Huh. All right. Did you touch David uh, Wilcox's forehead? I knew it. I, <laughs> no. Crazy. I just stare at it like, what's yeah, going on with that? He's part dolphin and not in a good way. Wasn't he distressed and his thought his life was in danger? I remember yeah. watching 2012. something about that. We're, talking, we're, we're talking shit about him, mind you, Jonathan, just to be clear. No, I know, but I'm being for real. Like, I remember him being in distress thinking his life was in danger or well, something. Anybody's that life. happened every other week, though, for real. Was, was that real or was that just was that just him being scared scared all the time? Well, actually, if you really want to know, which he's been open about this, so then I can be open about this. At that time, he was in an abusive marriage and she was abusing him. So he might have been projecting a lot of his own issues onto, you know, what might have been he thought was going on through a paranoid lens. I, mean, I did sense that some spousal type issues. I, I kind of figured that he was he, he was going through something like that. Okay. One thing I do want to do. I, I don't want to just like derail. I have a question though. Do you, is he? He thinks he's uh, Edgar Case. Uh, yes. Does Edgar. he still think that? He looked a lot like. I brought I brought it up to him the first time I met him. And I said, I support you being Edgar Casey. And he's like, oh, I don't do that anymore. I was like, what is doing that? So you either are or you aren't. He's not a fraud, dude. He's a, he's, it's so blatantly obvious. I mean, he's like he's like, he's like G- Jimmy Swaggered out here. Like, but come- the funny thing is, is that I think, ironically, I think he is the reincarnation. That Edgar Casey wasn't all that much either. Oh, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, who the fuck is shit about wow. this? Wow. <laughs> Too, I <laughs> didn't want to be like whatever i felt the same way about him i've never felt anything not that i'm oh like i'm living profit that's some fraudulent ass shit it just has growth written all over it i don't know that's just me personally yeah you can it's feel good. it that's important yeah. to trust that gross, man it's gross and i want to i want to jim unless you had a specific question i did want to go get like young in on some shit but yes yeah, no, I just think that it's he just seemed too good to be true, you know, like Look at his like f- how is somebody right in the center as drummer. Like I can just from playing music tell he's full of shit and he's not a real musician, just by the way he talks about playing music. A drummer. Yeah, if you're an expert in your field and he talks about something in your field, you'll know he's full of crap. You don't ever talk about that shit. Yeah, you don't you you what? Like, no. Do you think his intentions was genuine at one time, and and the fame and the money and uh, just the celebrity and is it getting attention just kind of warped yeah, it to a dark path? Edgar Casey. Uh, I really question. think he was born that way, sweetie. I think he was born a social climber, and he'll die a social climber. Is, isn't that more of a narcissist type mindset? Mm-hmm. Well, it's service to self, and that's what I saw. Service to self. Full left hand. Yeah, and they they would manipulate people whose hopes and intentions for a better world. That's like a very deep form of evil, in my opinion. I agree. That was my huge problem. I didn't care if he had some small following, but he had a huge following, and they're all going in the wrong direction. But that's when I got into the audience, and I was like, okay, who are these people? Are they students, or are they fans? And I learned. Cool. 
Because so ego death necessary for our friend, or because I'd love to talk about that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's jump into young, young. That's very, yeah, relevant. We're all going through. Well, at least a few of us personally here are all going through some. Not going through. We're always going through, right? I mean, we, but I mean, just like a it's lot, in the consciousness anyway. Right. It's it's yeah, and it's 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 extra loud right now. You know, is this we, a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Can you screw it up? It's just really loud. It was. I feel like it's a good thing, but I don't know. Let's ask. What do you think? What's the question? Go ahead, Aaron. Snake. Oh, you want to do a Jungian um, talk yeah. with the ego death? Like, um, we did. Yeah. See, I heard you earlier speak about your experience with ego death, and I'm very fascinated to hear more in such a young age, too. Thirty. I woke up at 30, and I mean, oh, ego cool. death woke up. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, so I'll just, th- I woke up at 30 as well. That's when I landed out in California. Um, so. No, it's uh, interesting to me, a I, couple. I don't want to cut you off. I got to say this, though, about Kundalini, because I feel like this could be a, con- like, people could easily get this confused, and I think it's very important to differentiate and separate what Kundalini is, right? That plane that we live in now is where the ego is, and alchemy is the process of this is what Od- Odin did. Right. By- Besides from a, like an archetypal reference, like in our, you know what I mean, where we're, where we're in meet, like how we have like go to Kundalini. Do you know what I mean? Like, or this is this, and you're, you're, or you're, we're trying to interpret it necessarily. But I feel like a, a lot of those things will be so definite that there's no doubt. It, it doesn't use English or words, it right. uses archetypes, signs, and symbols. That's how our unconscious speaks to us. It's exactly. Creativity. It's, it's, it is the gods. Right. And all these things. That- Actually, your subconscious is the gods through a filter of evil. See, what? because all right, let's let's pause with that. Yeah, okay. Because if we go, if we look in that route, because if if I want to, I I want to view the subconscious as almost like an akashic record of sort, right? Yeah. At the same yeah. time, as I'm very well aware that it's being preyed upon, it's being manipulated constantly, it is being, it is just being. Um, fed off of, you know, just just like it's a vein to be tapped almost. Where did you learn the subconscious has anything to do with the Akash? I didn't. I, didn't. I put it together just naturally because it feels right. Because it just feels right when I go and if, okay, it, the subconscious to me feels like a, like an untapped, like, all, it stores all like almost like an epigenetic thing too okay so i feel like this it's it's would you get away from science and gross physical oh. matter please i'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> um because that's what we're going to use urban yeah. here we go <laughs> uh, yeah go to the urban dictionary right, subconscious <laughs> at, uh existing or operating in the mind beneath or ben- beyond consciousness waking consciousness Correct. Or yeah. Okay. So then we have or, or imperfectly or not wholly conscious, or as a noun, the totality of mental processes of which the individual is not aware. Unreportable mental activities. That's fair. I feel like that's reasonable. All right. I think it's stupid. Not a repeatable scientific thing. So right. You, you can't measure that shit with science. It, so it's not scientific at all. So that's that's where I'm going with that. Um, but it, it's it's it's. Look for a layman. It's a. It's not an awful definition. Obviously, we there's a bunch of things in the dictionary we'd fix. So. Well, I I understand. I I'm a student of Carl Jung, so we have our nice. waking conscious mind, waking mind that we throughout the day, your subconscious is going to pick up all the subtleties that we conspiracy theorists talk about, like symbology and flashing lights and all the things that are used to mind control us. Right. Flicker rate. Go ahead. Yeah. Flicker rate, yes. All of these things that put the mind, the waking consciousness into a trance-like state or sometimes epilepsy, right? So that's your waking ego mind. I'm awake. I have a personality. Hello. Now we have your subconscious mind of the muggles. Not everyone has a subconscious, but I did. 
and I had to go into mine. And the first thing that I found in my subconscious that I was looking for was my anima, animus. So the animus is my inner reflection, karate, inner reflection of my male side. So I'm a female out here as a moon personality. Within, I have a masculine sun personality. And these are the two sides of the brain, the masculine and feminine. Part of me, masculine, is analytical, logical, thinks. Another part of me is feminine, is creative, the I, magi, nation, the magical Isis part of me. And then, so you have these two sides of the mind. When those two sides of the mind are no longer arguing, when they're no longer stuck in the subconscious patterns of your abusive childhood, right? When you're not having your mom's voice in your head on repeat, when you no longer are hurt by something that reminds you that happened in your childhood when you have healed all the monsters and the Freddy Kruegers, then you have to get past the the last guardian of the gate. And that's when Kundalini really starts. That's when you start seeing the ineffable, the eternal, and you get let back into heaven. As above, so below. Right now, your soul is in hell or heaven right now now as you live and breathe i okay and for everybody in the chat that can't handle that that oh my god this is too woo woo fuck you go grow up and seriously well go. i don't know how carl young can be seen as woo woo <laughs> the heart is where it's at though i mean when i learned about the taurus field that we put out that's six feet radius from the heart right and look what they're doing. When, as soon as they came out with that six feet apart, and I look on the floor, and the first sticker I saw, it had six, 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 and a person in the middle of it. You know, I'm like, oh, Seven okay. Up. Not only are they, in, they're invoking the carbon atom, and they're showing they're demonized the carbon, what we're made of, but they've also are teaching us not to be in each other's radius of that heart chakra that is so well it's all about that's inver- actually in inversion buddhism, in tibetan buddhism the aura yeah. is about that far not yeah. just the heart but the actual your whole aura right so when i heard that i thought the same thing yeah so is it like a vortex of uh low auras that it something's feeding off of now Mm. Oh, well, any kind, any generation of fear to generate fear is for food, for the beast, if you will. And I don't believe that a lot of people that are stuck in psychology and the thinking mind don't understand that evil is an actual force separate from the human race. It can integrate into a human and a human can be taken over by it and become a demon, right? So you're either doing the alchemy of upstairs or the alchemy of downstairs. You're either turning into an angelic or a demon one or the other you really think that huh i don't think it i've seen it i've experienced dude that sounds hilarious (laughs) you literally sounded like you guys check and i'm I'm snake we might have to this is this is the cosmology he put it how are we losing him? How are we not? Everybody heard that. I, was- I don't know. I'm open to it, but I got to do this work. Am I going to end up an angel or a demon? I don't know. I'm- Maybe you already have. Maybe the wheat has already been separated from the chaff and we're at the last mm. chapter. Yeah, I'm considering all that stuff because the way things are going right now, it's it's really where I'm at. Well, I'm not just considering it. I warned about it for years. And then finally, this last year, I said, this is it, kids. And then it happened. So that video is entitled Persephone and the Art of War. Nice. I'm getting on that. So, Corey, I'm curious then. So how can we... um, Phosphorus, light. Being able to look in and and be like what are some techniques that some some of us can work on for example like if you, if some people practice meditation or whatever what uh, you know what i mean yeah most people need to heal their ego and that will lead to flipping and opening up the heart chakra and then you can hear god on stereo you know you know which way to go even if you can't if you're not clear audience you can hear it 
Uh, but I did, David, I sent you a private tweet of something I would love for you to read this evening before we're done. It's called The Lament of Hermes. And I think it is something that we all need to hear right now about this time that we're in. For sure. Um, so healing my ego, I had to go, I went through 12 steps. I went through uh, codependency and John Bradshaw, uh, who's, he's the one who turned the term coined the term inner child. And John Bradshaw taught me how to rescue my inner child. And Lori Cabot, the witch who studied Carl Jung, taught me how to rescue my inner male. So I rescued, I'm the queen, right? I rescued the king and I rescued the baby. And that's what Isis would have done. (laughs) So you understand the baby between the masculine and feminine, the baby is your third eye, is your radio is your tunage and that's what allows you to see or is veiled where you're seeing through a glass darkly most people these days are seeing through a glass darkly meaning they uh have experiences and opinions lodged within the subconscious that color everything they see and do once you can cleanse those filters and walk through the doors of perception then you can get to krishna consciousness cosmic consciousness this is the consciousness of the yogis and the buddhas and it is our goal to have as many people enlightened as possible and to be done with the bodhisattva vow and no longer need to reincarnate so let's 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 stop let's let's actually touch on something really quickly then here. So what you subscribe to then you, you the, the whole reincarnation um, thing, and it's funny to look at the not funny but it's a it's a fun juxtaposition putting the the Greeks at, or wait was it I'm pretty sure. When the Egyptians, they would be mummified because they're like, we do not want to go into that bardo. We want to stay here, chilling. You know oh, I'm no, saying? that's not at all what they were doing, sweetie. Oh, but, they're- but, no, but hold on. I'm speaking from like when you, when you look at, and, and I don't, this is just what it appears to be. I'm well, not, that's just not what we were doing. We're time travelers. Okay. Well, uh, that's. We, we, you, so we had canopic jars. We had little jars that we put our organs and stuff in. And when we reincarnate, the ancient Egyptian, within our energy body, those canopic jars come alive again and bring us back our essence and we can remember. That's how we reincarnate. That's, that's what I meant from an Egyptian standpoint, because how if you look at how they handled their dead compared to, let's say, a Oriental or Eastern standpoint back then, right, where it's like, burn it with the Hindus, they burned it onto the next, right? Right. Get, get it going. There's no hanging around here. You got to get your soul back going, go through what you need to go through, work what you need to work through and you get your ass back here uh, and reincarnate. Whereas the Egyptians were like, fuck that shit. That's what it appears to be. At least when we look at it with the mummification of the Royal or whatever, however they, whatever they were, the, the how what they viewed as royalty and the leaders, um, Pharaohs, they were more of with the mummification what it appeared to be and what does the deciphering of the the um cartouches and all that reveals apparently is that that they didn't want to they're like hold up we don't want to necessarily don't burn us that quick kind of thing like if they went through those rites because they are master teachers sent here from the planet sirius so their souls came here technology back to with the well, their souls came here, not spaceships. Their souls came here to incarnate, to teach the earthlings how to be earthlings. So that, that's um, your macabre, is, isn't it? Yeah. But the ancient Egyptians that I speak of, I've never read of really in books. I've gotten hints and clues, but most of these pharaohs that I read about are really bad people. So my memory is that in case gods and goddesses walking on the earth with people that's the high vibration we were in in the egypt i remember you know where you came from from a didn't you hear you say that you know where you came from your soul my soul came to earth through yeah. the sirius star system sirius b in particular but i believe i'm originally a, a seed from andromeda <laughs> okay Hey, Corey, I have a question. (laughs) That that doesn't like inform my spirituality. It's just neat to think about. Yeah. But it's coming closer to Earth. 
does that does fasting and light energy have something to do with uh, whittling away food and losing weight? Have something to do with uh, lighting, lightning? Uh, I don't know what you call it. Uh, it just you know what I mean. Uh, does fasting have something to do with the light energy? So we have two physical places, scientifically speaking, in the body that we actually have phosphorescent actual light. That is in the heart chakra and the third eye chakra. When you meditate, um, I actually bring the energy down from the, the love realms that you cannot deplete them. They're the love realms. We can call it heaven. But I bring the energy down through my crown chakra, through visualization. I am a Reiki master. It's easier for me. But also just being intuitive is easier. And you bring it down all the way in through the third eye into the heart and actually there's a carly simon song that talks about this drinking in all the white light coming down from the heavens and that's what we do that's our medicine that's our food and i also suggest living in the sunshine is very helpful yes. to me in particular sun your balls so you want to grow the light within that's a light worker that's a and that's growing your aura too and then like the high magician people the mason people all those people they do something called the middle pillar and pill. that exercise works. The great ritual. Yep. Used and it. So it, but it all, I mean, a lot of it comes from Buddhism or ancient Egypt and it's all just been taken by the rich. <laughs> and just, yeah. Yep. Exactly. But Thanks. also David, I wonder if you got that, that private tweet from me. I didn't look yet, but I will. But um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Jim, you look like they you can't hide this stuff. It's inherent in all of us. It just no. doesn't come out. Ain't it? It's latent. You, you're exactly right. It feels like it's just it's just waiting. Yeah, and that's beautiful, and it's a, it's applicable to anybody that's want willing and wanting to better yourself spiritually. That's the best easiest way I can sum it up. Um, it, in all reality, it sounds corny. I don't give a shit. It is what it is. That's and the thing is about thinky brain intellectual people is that they don't, they don't remember the inner child and God talks to the inner child. He's not going to talk to your ego. No, why would he? Because the purest, obviously the purest form is going to be the inner child, in my opinion. I, no, and if people it, can't get over their ego chip of I'm a big adult and I know what's best for me, if they can't get past that, then we they're not going to hear God. People. We all know those people. And so an ego death isn't a bad thing. If it's, if it's already initiated and you've, feel like you're it's happening what do you do just let well, it unfold well i don't think you'll know that you're having an ego death until you're completely crazy and already over it that i, I don't think most people know during yeah. the ego death that they're huh. actually having it <laughs> okay cool that makes, yeah. sense. That, that makes the most sense to me <laughs> yeah. actually my ego deaths were epic because I'm, I was born psychic because in all my past lives, I've been cultivating my third eye. So right. mine was not like Gopi Krishna and the other, other experts have said it is. I literally couldn't understand who I was as a person. anymore. I did not remember my name. I was in such a high state of consciousness. I was completely out of touch with being human. Nice. And cool. it, it happened for a day or two. It happened for a month at a time. It's happened over 16 times and I have no control. So I can't do regular Buddhist practices, breathing and all of the, I meditate because I have to, but I don't do anything extra because I will go upstairs and I won't be here. And it really, I mean, I can't tell you, it's such a malady to so have like an illness. Like you, you almost like lose yourself when that happens. Like, what do, you, what do you mean? Like a malady, meaning like when you, when you try, because you don't need to enter these realms, but when you visit, when you try to, that's what it sounds like to me. You I have, don't try. This is spontaneous Kundalini awakening. So I went to my middle path, you know, the good old middle path with the bookmark, <laughs> that red bookmark ribbon. So that middle path that I always follow, like a Pied Piper, brought me to a stage right there in the evening at the Shakti Festival. 
I had a microphone in my hand and I was standing up. I was on a carpet because that's the only place I felt safe. And I began to channel beloved ones who have come before us, those of great wisdom. And the channeling began with George Carlin. If you're going to have an ego death, do you have to plan a funeral? Put fun back in the funeral. Ego death. For the westerner in your life. And how do you go about planning something like that out? Well, but who would you invite? Would their egos also have to be dead to be able to be invited? So that they get it? Well, if you don't want to end up in the psych ward, I would think so. Never invite the muggles to an ego death. How do you sneak around the ego? Like, yeah, I'm planning this funeral, but you know, don't tell my ego. You know, all hell's going to break loose if they find out. Do you give a speech? I don't know. Just all this electricity started up my body and there was fire and there was flames. And then <gasps> my ego collapsed. And I realized I was on the stage and in the light just like one of those celebrity people. Do you write a eulogy? Dear Ego, I will miss you not ever again. Thank you. Love, soul. And with that, they close the proceedings and the ego is put upon the great sacred boat set aflame and set out to sea, the sea of samsara. Thank you, thank you. I'm here all weekend. And I had my first one at 30, and Jesus said, welcome to the club, first one at 30. <laughs> huh. That's how I get through this, is because I can hear them, and they help me, and they coach me, and they're like, okay, first you're going to meet John the Baptist. Let's learn his lesson. And I went through the Christians, I went through the Hindu, I went through the Greeks, I went through all of their schools. Wonderful. That's awesome. I do have videos about this that actually explain it in a long form. Well, I got, anyway, I'm going to read what you sent me though for, from um, Twitter here. So it's Hermes, Lament of Hermes. Nice. Thrice great. So darkness will be preferred to light. Death will be thought more profitable than life. No one will raise his eyes to heaven. The pious deemed insane and the impious wise. The madman thought brave, the wicked esteemed as good. As to the soul and the belief that it is immortal or may attain to immortality, as I have taught you, all this they mock, persuade themselves it is false. No word of reverence or piety, no utterance worthy of heaven and of the gods of heaven will be heard or believed. That's heavy. Um, That's hermetics. Yeah. So we don't know. And, and for whatever, for the people that don't know, like Hermes is still kind of that mysterious. Nobody. I mean, there's no documentation that this person ever walked the earth kind of thing, but there, I don't know. I don't necessarily know all the lore behind it, but it doesn't. Well, he has hundreds of statues all over the world, so. And he's represented uh, universally through, like you said, what was it, the Caduceus? 11-11, you guys. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It is 11-11 on 311. It's 111 right here. I had to tie it. All good. Remember to do it, aren't they? Hey, Corey, I, I, uh, I was actually given a Hanuman bracelet. I don't know if you're aware of the, the Hindu god uh, Hanuman yeah, at all. Yeah, he's the monkey man. And I always yeah. call him Humanamananan. Do-do-do-do-do, Humanananan. do 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 But that's a digression. I'm, I'm so impressed, Corey. You ain't kidding. <laughs> that... When you share about you, you just you experiment. You you allow any of these uh, gods or you said Jesus, John the Baptist. You let them all grief. You just you you did it all. And I'm you know I remember breaking out of that Christian kind of. I was I was afraid. I was like if I I was so curious about so much of the 
you know, are God fearing, not God loving, right? God yeah, fearing, God, you're God. Nice. And yes, you to be God loving is to like look at it all and experience it all. I mean, oh my God. Well done. I mean, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you can see that from this disjointed chat. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I just, I, I encourage it now. I mean, I remember, I remember being real closed minded on that and kind of afraid, God fearing, like you said, but there's something there you're talking about. I think it's definitely the ego that has the defense mechanism that says everything has to be physical so that I can control it. Because the moment the ego sees that there's something bigger than it, it knows it's going to die. Yes. Uh, Dude, I must be, my ego must be just, I don't know. I don't know. I was getting confused out there, man. I'm just trying to learn a little bit about it and on other people's opinion. There's so much new age weird shit out there. It's just hard to find. This is it's just a real, It's almost a real... impossible to find. I wouldn't be You're the person probably... I am unless I found my guru. Hey Corey, well, how come it seems as if the, the numbers of people who have you have this kind of mindset or just uh openness to it is very dwindling or low? Is it is it just, uh, you know, there's a select few of people who actually have a spirit amongst these Sims simulators or what? Sims. <laughs> NPCs. Sims is my favorite game. <laughs> oh, no. Lemmings. So, um, yeah, some people do describe them as non-player characters. Or Hylic. Tulpas, maybe? Oh, th these people are not tulpas. No, they're not. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, but your ex girlfriend might be one in your head right now, a tulpa. God, no. Don't bring them up. They're in the past. Some other sucker married them, not. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Did that... you hear that, David? <laughs> yeah, that was sharp. Damn. What was the question? What was the question, John? Is there some people that are just flesh bots and have no spirit and we just interface with them? Okay. So if we can say, let's for a minute, follow me here, that the cycle of time started somewhere in ancient Egypt. That's when a bunch of the souls incarnated. Over the incarnations, you either grew towards the sun or towards the darkness and you atrophied and became a demon. Whoa. growing towards the sun now many of the people as we can see in buddhism there's two different paths you become a guru or a great person or whatever you can go on to other places which there are or you can stay here and help if you stay here and keep incarnating in these cycles to help you're called a bodhisattva and they take a vow every life to keep reincarnating until every sentient being has reached enlightenment are you so serious? I, yes. <laughs> I believe we are now at the time of graduation. And I believe this very deeply with all of my heart and soul. And that means that the genie curse of the bodhisattvas will also be lifted. And this whole dimension is going to change. Even what we call physical will shift. And I don't mean in a transhumanistic kind of way. Because you'll find the more you study the dark and the light, they both have the same narrative, but one's upside down, and that's the dark one. So are we going to become transhumans or are we going to become fully human, which would to be a Buddha and or anointed Jesus Christ? All of these words mean that you found the light within, you've been blessed, and it is a transformation. It is alchemy from within, and it does change even your soul signature the vibration of your very soul signature and that's why we incarnate on earth because you don't have to but having the seeds incarnate on earth you go from lead to gold and that's alchemy and i can explain this a little bit more through solomon's temple in the bible all of those bricks are part of Solomon's temple, that's a metaphor for your light body, your light body, your Merkaba, your soul car. When your soul car can get up to heaven, you can quit. You can go there and then go on to higher realms. But here, what we have is the people who would never graduate because they never made it past, they never grew towards the sun. 
and the masters. And so I'll bring it back to Led Zeppelin who said, there will come a time where all will be revealed, right? And that's the time we're in. We're in a time of masters and those who are lost to the darkness. I, I got it. I'm, I'm going to ask. Very well put. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful. That was, that was nice. Um, and it also like where you, where you went with the Solomon's temple and the great work and all that stuff. It's very easy to see how, uh, you can look, view it through a Masonic lens and see how they frame that all up with, with, um, the great work and everything, you know what I mean? And, and then just Solomon's temple, the whole thing, but you can go, if you want to look at it from a, like a, a magical, the Goetia, all that goes back to Solomon. Uh, yeah, and Solomon was the first Abrahamic to raise demons and curse his entire bloodline. So I've never done symbolic magic. Yeah, then there's that. Um, I'm not trying to get down. I'm not trying to call on some goetic madness. Um, I heard it was very powerful. Very powerful. People that <laughs> Mason, Mason seemed to like him, right? Yeah, but really, is darkness is Darth Vader powerful? You tell me, who's more powerful, dark or Darth or Luke? It, it just, it just mean, takes a lot longer. Uh, uh, Darth has time. physical power, but he is uncontrollable of his uh -huh. emotions. Well, yeah, I would call him a wasteoid, like an alcoholic, like an absentee father that we all had. Draining, just just sucking and draining and sucking and draining and just being useless, yes. Totally yeah. <laughs> for the archons, if you want to frame it up that way. Sure, and some of our parents were archons, if you want to put it that way, because you've got to play with this. You've got to see your own life myth and the myth. Right. And it makes, I mean, it resonates very, very strongly with me. So, I don't know. Most, most archontic people I've met has been in family, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to divorce my family for the most part. And I, a lot of clients over the years, thankfully, that when the family is toxic and they're not going to change their patterns, then you find a different family. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's that. Do that. And that's real love. And that's what people don't understand. They think if you abandon somebody, you're being evil. But actual true love is to first love yourself in a very caring and loving way. But the ego says, well, I love myself through new tennis shoes. I love myself through diamonds. And these are physical things that aren't love. Right. Yeah, it's just, it's fun. Hey, Jim, Jim, did you say your wife is, a, is an old-fashioned girl? Yeah, my girlfriend's pretty old-fashioned. Okay. Mine too. Yeah. Mine too. <laughs> Do you ever wear their clothes? What? <laughs> I just said it to freak you out. <laughs> that did freak me out. No, nah, we're not like your exes. We don't get into that kind of shit. Oh I got God. over it. <laughs> I learned what a real man was. Hey, but Rocky Horror Picture Show is was a cool uh, exposure as a young kid to something that's that's out of the norm. Yeah, yeah. seriously. I mean, like, let's be real. Well, I believe that if, if you watch if you watch the film again, Rocky War, there's so much in it that's going on right now. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's got a mad scientist. It's got aliens. It's just so familiar. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not going to say it. Tim Curry is probably one of the best uh, actors out there that doesn't get enough credit. Yeah, Legends. I loved him Darkness. in Legends. As yeah. The yeah. Yes. Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Terrifying. Love by the sun. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. That's medicine. I wanted to be Jack the Force Boy when I was a kid. A little trivia for you. The set of that movie that was in a big uh, recording studio in, in uh, England caught, it caught it, fire. It was the 007 studio, too. Uh, really? Yeah. A good copy. It's all chopped up. I've seen the full version once. It's like the European version. I got to see it in a theater when I was little, is, <laughs> which is weird. And that's where I ended up doing Rocky Horror, in that theater in particular. Nice. Because if you remember Legend, the film with Tim Curry, it's basically Persephone's story from Greece. And my, Holy name, crap. my name, Corinne, that's my, my name my mom gave me, Corinne. It's French. The French version of Cor, 
and Core became Persephone. So it was totally my experience there in the film. When I was about 14, I saw it at the Skywalk Theater. And then my 16th birthday, all my friends took me to see Rocky Horror. And then I ended up being an actor in the show, you know, in front of the screen as Magenta. So I was, and that's when I was, uh, I had a predator, a guy who was much older than me that took my virginity, that seduced me and took my virginity. And so I went through her myth, the rape of Persephone with Hades there in Rocky Horror. So life is a myth if you can see it, it that is. way. No, 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 no. Is this is this kind of what he talks about by um, uh, your life being a myth or making, what is it Carl Young was talking about? Because Actually, it's a bit more Joseph Campbell. And the hero's journey. Yeah, yeah, that's Joseph Campbell, dude, totally all the way. And we all, but also in the tarot, it's reflected from the full to the world you're going through the hero's journey. See, that's what I had this experience and I thought I was living a movie so many times and I And you know, there's a stand. soundtrack too because I believe oh, God is my DJ. Right on. Yeah. So, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. It's it was good. nice meeting all the gentlemen here. Thank you for having me. Also, why don't you give your web like wherever we can find your work or wherever anybody can find everything that you do? and uh, your services okay you can find me at occultpriestess.com also at occult priestess on twitter but pretty much the dot com has everything uh my videos are on youtube and bit shoot you know we're spread thin these days but really all you have to do is search my name occult priestess and i will pop up and oh. i do see clients quite often actually nowadays <laughs> And I can work with you wherever you find yourself. We start where you are. And I am your compassionate and loving guide who does not judge you for what you've been through or what you're dealing with right now. Because I've been through it and I've dealt with it. And that's what we all need. Not everybody needs a professional, but a lot of us need mentors. Amen to that. Finally, someone I can go to about wearing my wife's clothes. There you go. <laughs> Send them to me, honey. Send them to me. I'll take them. <laughs> I'm not much of a man by the light of day, but by night I'm one hell of a lover. I'm just a sweet transvestite from transsexual Transylvania. <laughs> women have been enjoying wearing men's clothes for a long time now <laughs> y'all love these our sweatshirts yeah those sweatshirts they disappear you disappear god damn it <laughs>